Yeah, it's just just a, a weekend where you play three teams in three days. What what kind of challenge does that present? And and when it comes to your your staff and, and doing scouting, I guess just what kind of challenge is that for them to? Well, I mean, you're essentially doing three times the work to get ready for the games. Like you you handle each game. Like starting pitching wise, you you might be able to eliminate the non-starters for your opponent, but you you really have to assess the entire bullpen. And then as the weekend goes on, you can start to trim some of the bullpen guys from your later opponents based on their workload. But it is a lot of work, and, and you do have to attack these things kind of one game at a time, although the preparation is is far deeper. You know, it kind of positions you, and I like these early in the season. It gives you a regional feel, and you have – you know, a four-team field. These are capable teams. You know, there's some interesting stuff when you dive into this, but it's a, it's a good experience and the variable of the weather and being on the road and, you know, a different venue, it's a helpful thing as you progress deeper into the season. So there, there's a lot of parts of this that are educational and, and good experience for the staff and for the players. Link, was this on the books when you took the job, or is this something that you came, you, you joined and if signed off? If you talk a little louder, it would help me. Not a problem. Uh, was this a invitational tournament that was already scheduled before you took the job here in Tallahassee, or was this something that you set up last year to, to join on with? You know, there wasn't really much on the schedule for 24, so I, I kind of built this one from scratch. And I had been here with Notre Dame before, and we actually had our Southern Conference championship tournament here every year so i'm familiar with it and i'm i'm close with jake at michigan state jake boss and dan hartlib they, they do great things with their programs and this was something i discussed um when i was considering taking notre dame and i kind of flipped that and it and it fit in i was having a tricky time getting a series so this worked and it checks the boxes like i said of giving you a tournament feel like you you look way down the road and you hope you're involved in kind of a regional setting with four teams and and clearly this gives you that that feel you have to be adaptable you know your pregame is a little bit different and you know what you're able to do on the field each day is a little bit different if you're playing a, a game after a game that's going on so I like this and and yeah I did build this schedule essentially from scratch for 24. I think you guys have only made two or three errors on the infield through through seven games. Just how pleased have you been with, with the infield defense you guys have gotten so far? Yeah, Brett, I, I like it. And we have to assess, too, the strikeout rate has been through the roof. So some of that, I, I like the way we're playing. I still see things every day when we train that, that do concern me. But when you're striking guys out at the rate we're punching people out so far, and does that continue? Hard to continue at this clip. I like the overall feel I have. I do. Um, I, I, I am intelligent enough to recognize that the strikeout rate, the ball is not in play um, as much as it probably will be as you continue to move forward and the opponent hitters have logged more at-bats and are probably a little more comfortable with what they're doing. So kudos to our pitching staff. When you can put people away and punch people out like this, it cleans a lot of things up. And, you know, aside from that, we have done some nice things. I, the athleticism, when you go around the infield, you do have some range in athleticism really at every spot. So that that is good to see. And we have turned some nice double plays. I think the charge plays stand out more than anything for me, the way Cam has come and got some of those balls arranged to his left, Lodis, Fisher, and Ferro has done some nice things at second. So I, I am happy with it, Brett. Yeah, it's been it's been solid. Coach, how, how do you approach Joel a – uh, oh, Sorry, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, how do you approach a Sunday starter? I think you also mentioned weather could factor in there, but what are your thoughts on, on game three? We're going to t TBD that right now. And and when I talk to you guys as the season began, the starting pitchers performing like starting pitchers has really helped. Now, we need to continue that. And we've tried to keep that pitch count 
in the 80s, roughly, for these guys early, eventually that's going to lengthen out a little bit. I don't know right now on Sunday. Um, clearly, Tejeda was not at all what we had seen, not at all. I mean, he, he didn't throw a strike, but there's more in the tank, way more than we saw this past start. He's going to have to factor into this. When we get through the first two days, let's just see where we stand. And then Whitaker, again, the comfort level with what he's done on the Tuesdays and probably needs to do it again, especially with two midweek games coming up, that gives you a more comfortable feeling on Sunday if you have to mix and match and run through some some bullpen options, knowing that you have Whitaker on lock and load for, for Tuesday when you when you go out again. So it's okay. Ideally, you know, essentially, if you had Whitaker back in the fold, it, it gives you a cleaner shot. But so far, it's been it's been fine. It's been okay. Um, I Lauk, Rowan, you know, Dorsey hasn't pitched in a week. I, I don't I don't know that we get to where he starts Sunday, but we've got some options, and the guys just continue to grow. And Ben Barrett has. It wasn't sharp, sharp Tuesday evening, but it was it was good, and I thought he got better as he went along. So where we land Sunday, I don't know. I, I do like some of the options. You have Armstrong who's back, and he's going to continue to extend. So I like it. Clearly, Tejeda was the one that that wasn't as we had expected it to go based on what we had seen in the preseason. Coach, how do you go about managing Yoel then? I mean – are you more apt to, to try and give him another start so he's working with something clean, or do you put him out in the middle of a game in a relief situation? Would that maybe help get a better gauge of where he's at? I would like to get him out in a game, it, like in the middle of a game. I, I would I would like to try that. If, if we find ourselves in a position where it's not as impactful maybe for him to jump back out there, um, that would be my choice. Does it play out that way? It's not always possible. You know, you may get to an opportunity where it seems like let's start him again. The nice thing about the start is that you can script and predict your whole warm-up routine and your process. So the starting pitcher really should have the biggest advantage in terms of just the preparation and walking out of the bullpen on point. Now, clearly last Sunday, that was not the case for him, but, you know, I could go either way if we can ever separate a little bit in one of these and maybe get him out there and let him get his feet wet and get a little more comfortable. That would probably be the way to go. But again, you, you can't script some of these things, uh, the ebbs and flows of the weekend determine it and we'll land in the spot for him. And I told him, Hey, that, that wasn't you. Like said that, that was not what we had seen. That is not you at your best. That was, something you're going to have to deal with because it happened like there's no it happened so you're going to go back out there you're going to be better you have to shake it off it did happen but you have to learn and fight through that and those are parts of the the ups and downs of this game that players face and when you play so many games and get so many chances you have to deal with more ups and downs in our sport than virtually any other sport I know you mentioned last week that, that Gavin was receiving treatment. I guess just do you have any sort of update on, on a Gavin's status? Yeah, he's out right now. Um, he's still working through this, um, not pitching this weekend. That's unfortunate, but it's where we are. Coach Alex maybe hasn't got off to the start that he wants to, but he's, he's put together such a great resume already before he got to Tallahassee. Just what are you trying to have him work through, and then could this – weekend be an opportunity for him to put something together and get some good ABs for you guys. Could you help me one more time? Alex, did you say Alex? Yeah. Lodi. Yeah. Um, just a talented kid like works and, and he's so into it and like his, his closing on the ball defensively, like coming to get those little ground balls and those choppers just been really good. The at bats, I think he's trying too hard right now. And you're in a position where there's guys around you that are, that are very capable. So um, I, I think it's – this is just new to him and not getting out of the gates is a little difficult for him. So we're just trying to calm him down. He's worked on – he's worked on his swing. We're trying to just clean it up a little bit. The The swing is part of it. And then the pitch selection is probably the bigger part. He's been a little too aggressive. He's made some, some early easy outs on secondary pitches. So – 
just a bit more control of the at bat and the pitch selection, probably over the top of anything that's going on with the swing and just settling. And he's pressing a little bit, but nobody plays harder and works at it harder than him. He's going to be fine.